We are continuing with the Prandtl's lifting line theory. Fortunately, this is the very last part we have to cover. So the purpose of this particular video is to show you the MATLAB program called Prandtl.m that I have written. We are going to look at the program to see how it is structured. Then we are going to uh, uh, run the program for the example that we saw in our class notes and see what type of numbers do we get. So if you click on this, then it'll ask you what you want to do with it. You can download it and save it somewhere with the name Prandtl.m. I have already done it, so I'm going to just go to the MATLAB. So this is my program Prandtl.m. Hopefully you can see my screen and uh, hopefully everything is clear. So first thing we notice is um, as you look through this, it's got a lot of input, uh, ask you to input a lot of stuff. Like the, what is the root card, what is the tips card, what is the span, what is the lift curve slope, what is the angle of attack, what is the zero lift angle, both at the root and the tip. Then it's going to go to work. Okay. So the same information we supplied to our example in our PDF file. I will only want to keep two terms in the series, A1 and A3, so I have set N equal to 2. If I wanted to keep more terms, let's say A1, A3, A5, A7, then 1, 3, 5, 7, that's four constants, so I'll set n equal to 4. That's all. So once you set the n equal to 4, it uh, programs, the program is written in here, so it basically it sets up a 2 by 2 system of equations. This is nothing more than the alpha minus alpha naught type of uh, expression. And then uh, this is the four by two, two by two system of equation. That's this uh, array. And here we are inverting the matrix, and we are solving for it lift. Then we are solving for the drag. So it's a very very simple minded program. We also want to plot the lift. How is the lift distributed from root to tip? So this program would also generate a plot of CL, which is the sectional lift coefficient, as a function of y. How do we get CL from gamma? CL lift is rho v infinity times gamma. Then uh, you convert uh, rho v infinity times gamma, which is L prime, divided by one half rho infinity v infinity squared times the chord. Then you get that expression. The expressions given in here. Then you can plot it. You can give it the label, and you can uh, do whatever you want with it. So it's a very simple program. All of um, 80 lines, including a lot of comments and so forth. So let's run the program for our case that we saw in our PowerPoint slide. So let's quickly review the case we are going to run. We are going to run for a simple trapezoidal wing. Span is 15 feet. Chord is this number. Cambered aerofoil. This is a alpha knot, alpha. So we just need to remember some of these numbers. Otherwise, we can always go back and forth and take a look at it. So let's go to the MATLAB program. And I'm going to write Prandtl, P-R-A-N-D-T-L. Hopefully you can see the screen on your computer. Um, and uh, you're able to see it, I hope. Um, so now it asks for me, what is the root card? Okay. The root card was 2.381. So I'm going to say 2.381, it's in feet. So this is the root card. It asks me what is your tip card. Tip card is 0.953. So I'm going to say 0 0.953. It'll ask you what is your span. We you know the span is 15 feet. So we put this 15 feet. Is the wing twisted? What is the root twist? It's not untwisted wing, so it's zero. What is a twist at the tip? It's an untwisted wing, so it is zero. So these two numbers are zero. What is the lift curve slope in units per radian? It's two pi. Pi is 3.141, uh, something like that. So two times that is 6.28317, roughly. Then it asks you what is the, let me, let me make it a little bit, uh, so it asks you what is the lift curve slope at the tip. Again, the same number, 6.28317. It's roughly 2 pi. Okay. 
Then what is the angle of attack? It's 4 degree angle of attack. What's the angle of zero lift? It's minus 1.2 degrees at the root. And the tip is minus 1.2 degrees at the tip. Okay. So it has for the same basic information that we are providing here in for our hand calculations. So this is the information that I put into the MATLAB program. So now if we hit a return, it'll compute number of quantities. It'll scroll fast, very, very fast. Okay. I just have two terms, so the lift distribution looks like two, two, two points, you know, so this graph is not very meaningful. So let's uh, mi minimize it. Let's even close it, the graph. Just let, let's look at the C, C capital D is 0 0.00880. Okay. So if you go to my PowerPoint slides, our hand down calculations, we get CL equal to 0.4613. Okay, something is on. So what happened here? No, no, it's a CD is 0 0.0080. Hand on calculations, CD is 0 0.0077. So it's pretty close, you know, within four significant digits. CL here is 0.4613. Here the CL we get is 0.4717. So depending on how you truncate it, we are getting the answer to within 1% of hand, hand calculations. If you want to know what is my A1, what is my A3, A is stored, as you know, in an array called A array A. So MATLAB stores everything as an array, so if you type A, then it will spit out the two constants. This is A1. This is A3, 0 0.0167 minus 0 0.0017, so 0 0.0163 minus 0 0.0013, so it's uh, close to what we were getting. Okay. So the MATLAB program does exactly what we did by hand. But if you do not need to restrict yourself to two terms, you can do five terms or even ten terms. So let me make it ten terms. It's hard to do by hand, 10 by 10 system, you know, how do you invert it? So now a computer, on the other hand, can do it very, very fast. So I'm going to, I'm going to save the, I'm going to run this program. Let's, uh, let's uh, save it. How do I save it? N equal to 10. And I'm going to I can't find the save button. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to save it. So I saved it. So n equal to ten. So now I'm going to run the program. So we're going to go to the just now down in here, I'm going to type the panel. MATLAB, one trick is if you keep pushing the upward arrow, you keep going to the previous input, keep pushing the upward arrow until you get the word panel. Then that's the program you want to run. Okay. So I'm running panel. Now, if you could push the upward arrow again, you will go. This is the root card is 2.381. Tip card 0.953. It's kept all this information in memory. So by using the upward arrow, I can find it. What was the number I put in? 15 feet. Compute the twist angle. Twist angle is zero. You get it. Tip, tip, tip twist angle is also zero. Lift curve slope is 6.28 something. So that's a lift curve slope. Both at the root and the tip, it's 2 pi. The angle of attack is 4 degrees. Angle of zero lift is minus 1.2 degrees. Minus 1.2 degrees. So as soon as you hit it, now it will do a n by n. Notice now the lift distribution is much more smoother. 
you have 10 points on this curve, it goes to zero at the wingtip, it goes to some value like something here. This is the spanwise distribution of the lift. It's not elliptical at all. That means we need more lift near the tip, near the root, so this number has to go up. So these numbers have to come down. So we need to twist the wing to produce an elliptical loading. Okay. So you could put a, change the card, come up with a more complicated platform, or you can change the twist. So many things you could do. Now you look at the CL and CD. This is CL, 4628, 4613. CD is 0.0077. You know, a MATLAB code, 0.0077. And uh, this is my spanwise distribution. If you print the A array, you get uh, 10 numbers. Notice that only the first number is dominant then all the other numbers are very, very small. So typically, two or three terms is enough. If you have more terms, they don't necessarily add a lot of accuracy. But they let the computer do it, so I let 10 terms. Okay. So you can run the MATLAB program, Prandtl.m, for any, any incompressible wing that's not swept backwards or swept forwards. If you have a swept wing, you have to use another program called a lifting surface program. There is a program called AVL that we will cover in a future lecture. And that's what you will be using for your second project, AVL project in this course. So we are going to stop this particular video here. It's a very short video. All it shows is how to run the MATLAB program. So in the future, when I give you a homework problem, you may want to spot check your answers by running the MATLAB code to see whether your hand-done hand calculations agree with the Prandtl program. Do not forget to change the N number to 2 if you're doing the same number of terms in your hand-drawn hand calculations. So I'm going to stop this video at this point.